Good evening and welcome to this special edition of the SAFM Market Update with MoneyWeb, where we speak to captains of industry about their area of expertise. Much has been said about the need to reindustrialize our economy, but how much of that is actually going on and who's doing it? Well, my next guest is uniquely placed to give us some insights as he and his partners have been quietly investing in the industrial base of our economy. His name is Idumelen Khabusile, who is a co-founder and CEO of Sphere Holdings, the company founded in 2003. It's an investment holding company driven to create value for funders, shareholders and business partners. Itumilang, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Uh, take us back to the very beginning when you were uh, an investment banker for a number of years and then you and your partners uh, decided to start a private equity fund. Correct. Um, after spending about seven years in investment banking, having qualified as a chartered accountant before then, um, I took the view that really I wanted to move from being on one side of the table as an advisor to being on the other side as a, as a, as a principal. So we decided in 2003 to launch uh, Sphere Holdings and really as a dual, uh, with a dual strategy, one, to build and on uh, to build an on balance sheet business mm. uh, and also to raise a fund and manage a third party a classical third party private equity fund looking at the um, on on balance sheet part of the business was it always your intention to invest in in industry to be honest i think if 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 i said that i, I don't think that would be true i think mm. clearly um when you start a business um we 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 wanted to build an investment holding company uh, we sought uh, to identify good businesses really across different sectors and to back those management teams with some capital and provide them with um, some of our expertise and work with them to yeah. really build those businesses. But at that time, uh, we were much more flexible in terms of which sectors we are going, we're going, to, focus were going on. to focus on. All right. So was there a space that you'd identified um, at, at the time uh, in terms of working with businesses and, and, um, uh, and, and, and doing that side of the business? Or what, what motivated you to start Sphere? I co-founded the business with others when I was uh, 31. And so, so relatively, re- relatively young, yeah. and you've got ambitions of uh, of changing the world, and you've got <laughs> ambitions of creating, creating wealth. Um, I think what I was clear, what what I was clear on, and what uh, my partners were also clear on, we wanted to build a new type of uh, black economic empowerment investment holding company. We in fact styled ourselves as a new generation investment holding company, uh, and we said new generation in that um, we wanted to. Uh, utilize our expertise, yeah. utilize the experience that we had gained in investment banking, in private equity, in in the legal f- in legal field, to really work with the management teams and to add value to to the to the to the businesses that we we're going to invest in. How did you go about raising money? We were quite fortunate um, in that um, our initial seed capital came from a combination of our own savings. Um, from the work that we had previously done, and at, and we were also then backed by uh, one of the financial institutions. NetBank provided us with some seed capital to get our business going. Um, and our approach um, in those early days was that over and above seeking to build an investment holding company and a private equity firm, mm-hmm. we would then leverage off the, the skills that the skill set that we had, being from the advisory field, uh, and we would seek to effectively in the in the, in the short term earn advisory fees that would help pay for water and lights yes. as we were looking to build the business and uh, tell us about those early days uh, did you have moments where you thought what were we thinking <laughs> you know looking back i think if anyone came to me um as a kind of a early 30s guy with the business plan or the ideas that we had and told told me that they wanted to build a business I'd quite frankly tell them to 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 remain in their jobs and stick <laughs> to what they're doing. Um, but I think you know you're young, you're ambitious, uh, and quite frankly, I think the country also provided an uh, an enabling environment. Um, it was not easy initially to to raise capital, but we were quite fortunate to uh, to leverage uh, the network that we had, mm. and to also put together what we believe to be a compelling investment case for a funder to work to to work with us. Um, 
luck played a great great role in uh, in getting us to uh, to be able to raise the capital to get the business going. But obviously, uh, a lot of hard work um, coming in with that as well. Tell us about the relationship with Ethos from the beginning. We were quite clear that um, we wanted to um, raise a third party fund. Um, yeah. What do you need to raise a third party fund? I think one, you need to be able to. Uh, at the very least, demonstrate that you've been in private equity and that you've got a track record. Yeah, we are quite fortunate at this stage uh, um, to have relationships with a number of the Ethos uh, Ethos partners, and we jointly came to the decision as Ethos and Sphere that uh, we would partner up to uh, uh, to really form a, a a partnership that would enable us as Sphere to raise our first fund, uh, partially leveraging off their track record and would also enable Ethos to partially empower their business and um, be better positioned to raise at that time their fifth pool, uh, fifth pool of money, Ethos Fund 5. Yeah. So it was really a win-win um, a partnership that we struck up. And is that partnership still on- ongoing? The partnership was restricted to Sphere Fund 1, the, okay. the, uh, our, our first fund, yeah. and restricted to Ethos Fund 5. Uh, we still have some residual investments in Sphere Fund 1, and we continue to have an interest in um, Ethos Fund 5. Um, they have gone on to subsequently raise uh, Fund 6. And as you know, we have now um, decided to become, to focus really on building our balance sheet business yeah. with a much longer term investment horizon uh, and really looking to work with our management teams over the long term and build those businesses over the long term. What was the very first business you invested in? Our very first business um, was an engineering business, um, a, 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 an engineering business that does uh, um, plant uh, maintenance. Um, and in fact, uh, at the time that we invested in, we uh, were quite oblivious to what the future would hold for that business and for, and in fact for, for the country. So mm. our first um investment was in Babcock engineering business and what they actually do today yeah. they are responsible for maintenance of boilers uh, at uh, Escom power stations and at power stations that generate um, a th- about a third of our country's coal-fired uh, power supply goodness <laughs> so I mean at the time and this was 2004 yeah. I think none of us uh, anticipated, anticipated where, we would be the, today. Uh, where, where we would be today mm. so clearly it's a business that um, uh, we take very seriously and it is a business that plays really a critical role in uh, powering up uh, our country and it's an investment that we're proud of how did the approach happen did they come to you did you go to them how did that how does that know typically the Babcock approach uh, was through uh, it was really through our networks uh, okay. they had a need um, to empower our business uh, to empower their business rather and we had a need as a new investment company to start putting some runs on the board mm. uh, and um, we were at that stage as I said fairly sec- sector agnostic so we are prepared to look across sectors um, but it has that partnership has really served to uh, provide us with a great platform and it is a platform that we are leveraging today to try and build ourselves into uh, a bigger investment holding company. So that was what, back to in 2004? That was in 2004, correct. We, in 2015, you still in this business. That's quite a long-term approach then, instead of the typical five to seven year um, sell out, move on to the next to the next thing no absolutely I think it's uh, the partnership has worked extremely well for us and and a, a core one of our core values as a business is is that of partnership we we really seek to uh, build long-term enduring partnerships with management teams and fellow shareholders uh, um, whenever we're getting into a business and it's a partnership that we're extremely proud of uh, it has worked well for for the business and it has also worked well for 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 Babcock and us and us as, as investors and it's a partnership that we are in fact looking to take to another level looking to continue building on this great platform all right i'm going to pick up on that and get a sense of what um typically these these small medium um, sized enterprises um in this country tend to need we of, often when we speak about entrepreneurship when we speak about small businesses people say oh they need funding but clearly there's more um in terms of expertise and other uh, other resources that businesses need so we're going to pick up on that we're going to continue our conversation with Itumile Kabisele in a moment